On this episode of Wilson the VW Bus, I add an electrical wiring circuit for the new front amber fog lights and install a cargo door table from a vendor that specializes in no longer available VW parts. Welcome to Wilson the VW Bus, the podcast about my adventures with my 1967 VW camper bus named Wilson. I'm your host and current owner-operator of Wilson, Joe Masperi. If you're just joining in for the first time, well, you're about to listen to me talk about the work I've been doing on my VW bus for about a few minutes, and uh, these episodes are only about 10 to 8 to 10 minutes each. Although it's just me right now, I do plan on expanding the podcast to include guests and on-location interviews now that the weather is warming up. I just got a few new event dates from Dave, Wilson's previous owner, like Volksfest 2023 in Mannheim, PA on April 29th, uh, Dubs and the Shrubs on May 20th in Hamilton, New Jersey, and the Deutsch Classic on July 8th in OEPA. I can't wait to check out these VW events for the first time. Now, in the chronology of our VW bus story that began with me back in the spring of 2021, when I first got Wilson, it's now November of 2022, and I've been on the hunt for a set of round amber fog lights for the bus for a while now. I've seen a few other buses sporting either one or two fog lights, some square, but most round and amber in color. I did read somewhere that the one light look was a European thing, kind of like the uh, single stripe that runs down the top of sports cars that's only on one side. Anyway, I had my heart set on a pair of amber fog lights. And I thought, "Eh, maybe a nice set of German Bosch lights would go good with the German bus. But as soon as I saw the price tag on even a used set of those, well, you know the rest of that story. Way out of my price league. I thought that I found a good set of lights for sale on Facebook Marketplace, but it turned out the seller only had one of the lights, just a single one, so I passed. Then I found another set of two that looked to be about the right size and shape, but the seller didn't know if those were 6 volt or 12 volt, another pass. So I finally set my sights on a nice affordable pair I found on eBay, some vintage 1950s style 4 inch amber fog lights in 12 volts, for only 59 bucks. Sounds perfect. For the price, what have I got to lose? Well, I've had to install auxiliary lights in other vehicles I've had before, and the one thing you should always remember to do is to install a Bosch relay when you're wiring up the lights. This enables you to activate the lights via a nice little switch and a light gauge wire, and then the heavy load wire feeds the lights from the activated relay. It's much safer that way and helps prevent any electrical fires. So I took a trip up to the West Marine store, which is just uh, up the road a few minutes, to pick up some new wiring, connectors, uh, and a small accessory fuse panel that I installed under the dash. I ran a heavy gauge uh, 8 wire from the battery all the way up to the front of the bus through the frame rail and connected it to the new 8 circuit auxiliary fuse panel. I then can power the relay for the fog lights and a few other accessories without affecting the stock VW wiring harness or tapping into anything else. Over the past few months, I thought I would also attempt a secret little project of mine that I called the VW Bus Electric Defroster. You see, I have no heat in the bus, as the stock VW heat tube exchangers are incomplete, and even if they were in good condition, they are notoriously underpowered. My idea was to take a small electric heating element and incorporate a powerful 12-volt fan motor into an electric heater defroster that I mounted under the bus nose and connected it to the stock defroster tube. I fabricated a small box out of some sheet steel that I had laying around in the garage, installed the heater element and a fan that I sourced from Amazon, and wired them up with another relay and sent the control wires up the dash. This would also get power from the new 8-circuit auxiliary fuse panel that I installed. It's a slim, compact, and weather-protected unit, part number 170-54214, if you're interested, from westmarine.com. Now, Wilson has always had an electric fuel pump since I've had them, because Dave, the previous owner, 
installed a larger electronic distributor, which uses up way too much room where the stock mechanical fuel pump would normally reside. The electric fuel pump also uses a relay in the back of the engine compartment and a dash-mounted single switch under the dash by the radio. I now, however, need to upgrade this single switch panel with three switches, one for the fuel pump, one for the new electric defroster, and one for the new fog lights. So I had two matching switches in my parts bin, but I needed to order one more to have three matching switches and then took some of my famous scrap steel and made a new switch panel just big enough for the three switches. This of course got a coat of the pearl white paint uh, to blend it in and then everything was mounted and wired up. Only one problem, how was I or anyone else to know which switch was which? That's a tongue twister. Uh, I ordered a set of very small decals that actually glow in the dark, but more importantly indicate the function of each switch on the panel. It came in a big sheet with all kinds of labels from lights to fans to UFOs and even a Bigfoot. Um, they're all real small, about the size of a fingernail. Perfect size for what you need here for a switch. I actually hit a little turtle decal on the outside of Wilson. I doubt anyone will ever see it. Now, all I had to do was mount up the new fog lights and I decided that the location I liked best was inside the front bumperettes and midway vertically between the bumper and the front towel rack. After looking at a few mounting options, including some that mount to the towel rack, I simply elected to drill the mounting holes onto the side of the upright bumper bracket and hang the light from the side and then clock the lens so that the lights were now correctly oriented. You can clearly see them mounted in my podcast icon. I felt that this minimized any large brackets or bolts visible on the front bumper. A few days after installation of the fog lights, I set off to Fords, New Jersey, uh, one of my neighboring towns here, in the late afternoon for a local car cruise night. They had scheduled this event a few weeks earlier, but it had been rained out, and now this was the rain date. They promoted a kid-friendly event where the children could come with their Halloween costumes and check out old cars and get candy and I had bags of it left over from Halloween, which was about a week previous. I left the bag of candy on the cargo floor of the bus and started talking to the other people at the show, not thinking too much about it. A few kids showed up, and they were in costume, and when they approached me, I simply said, Sure, I I have free candy. It's right over there in the beat-up old white bus. No sooner did the words of my mouth did I kind of cringe, and I thought, Oh boy, I got a few chuckles from the parents I was talking to, and I decided to relocate the goodies and just leave the open bag hanging off the front bumper for the rest of the evening until the candy was all gone. I want to have a cool old VW bus and not some kind of creepy candy van thing going. Anyway, the night went on and I eventually was getting ready to go. It was getting dark and time to head home. I switched on my new fog lights and they lit up the pavement in front of the bus with a beautiful amber glow for the entire trip home. It was honestly a much better night driving experience. I absolutely love them. I had a few days off from work, so I once again began to search for another part that I wanted for Wilson, an SO42 side door table. I've seen these tables for sale on the Samba website, but for a well-used table, they're about $75 without the hinges, and the table leg was another $200. I've been looking for a while, and the used items are either in terrible shape or priced out of my reach. So I then stumbled upon a website called NLAVW.com, which stands for No Longer Available VW Parts. Established in 2008, this UK-based company has the facility and capacity of designing, modifying, and innovating those no longer available Volkswagen parts, and they do this at the same, if not higher, standard than the original VW parts. I'd seen their site and catalog previously, but I was under the impression that they did not deliver to the U.S., and I was completely wrong. The uh, the table that I was looking for with the white and gray lines, just like the dining table that I already have installed, was available with the stand for under $100. Now, I know the difference between a new reproduction and an original part, but Wilson was originally a panel bus, if you remember, so there's no need to go all the way pure with a part like this. I ordered the door table, and it arrived from Stratford-upon-Avon, Warwickshire. I hope that's how I spell it right, and say it right, uh, in England, in only three days. 
I was completely blown away at the quality of these items and the speed of delivery. Thank you, NLA to VW. I bought other things from them since. Installation of the table was a snap. I looked up a few other online photos of other camper vans and measured out the height of the table where it needs to mount to the front cargo door. Then I simply screwed it in. Uh, they also sell a matching spice rack for the other door, but I haven't decided on if I like that yet, or it's still a maybe. If I do, I'm going to be ordering it from them. Well, autumn is soon coming to an end, and it's getting pretty cold, and Wilson is back in the garage preparing to hibernate for the upcoming winter months. We celebrate our Thanksgiving with my family, and the next day I take the large carving pumpkins that I have in front of my home and decide I'm going to make a homemade pumpkin pie from scratch. I made the crust, the pumpkin pie filling, everything myself. I cut up the pumpkins, baked them for about an hour, and puree them in the blender to smooth out the filling. And I also baked the seeds in the oven with some salt, pepper, and a little garlic powder. Uh, although these weren't the kind of pumpkins normally used for cooking, they yielded way too much filling, and they made two pies. But they were awesome. Definitely a project I want to do with the family again next year, and I hope to start a tradition with the kids and the grandkids. Well, that about wraps it up for this episode of Wilson the VW Bus. Please join me again next time where I discuss some important family milestones and the winter plans for Wilson. Thanks for listening.